Hey, hey, Waffle Gang, I do hope you are well. My name is Mark, and today we're checking out some more relationship stories. And if you do love a Reddit story, why not consider hitting that like, subscribe, maybe that notification bell too. Well, let's crack on with today's first story, which comes from a throwaway account and says, Girlfriend wants her little sister to move in with us. I don't want that. I, 28 male, and my girlfriend, 26 female, of three years have been planning on moving in with each other in a little under two months. She told her landlord she won't be renewing and they already found a new tenant to sign their lease to. We've been looking at apartments and have a few we are heavily considering. Well, recently her little sister, 17, has been having issues with her stepdad. To my knowledge, no abuse, just don't get along and fight a lot and has asked to stay with us for the rest of the last year of high school. My girlfriend has always been a little motherly towards her sister because of the significant age gap and wants to let her stay with us. I, however, don't want us moving in together to also include her sister. I really don't want to live with a 17-year-old in general, but especially not as I'd acclimate to living with a partner for the first time. There's also the money issue. We've been looking at two beds since we both work from home pretty often, and we're going to have one room be the office slash guest room. I make more than twice as much as my girlfriend, so I was willing to pay a bigger share of the rent to be fair, and I'd probably use the room as an office a little over half the time to make it fair to me. But if she'd stay with us, I wouldn't have an office or we'd need a three bed, which would be even more expensive. I could technically afford to spend more, but don't want to. She cannot spend more than what she's already committing to. Her parents are pretty poor, so getting support from them feels unlikely. This is causing a lot of conflict because now I'm wanting to either just renew my lease and wait another year or tell her sister sorry. My girlfriend says I'm not being supportive and abandoning her family. It's causing a huge conflict and I don't know what to do. Opie had some more information in the comments and says I just don't want to live with a teenager. Money is a big part of it for me but not the whole thing. She's not my kid and she is not homeless. Everything she said about the stepdad, it just seems like normal teenage drama with parents. I just don't see how that should be my or her responsibility. I asked if he was abusive and she just said no, but he's just an asshole. And I feel like she can just learn to get along with him. I've met both of them and the sister can be very dramatic. The stepdad, I'll admit, I don't know super well, but he seems like a normal hardworking guy. The thing is, I don't think she needs to stay with us. I think she can just learn to be civil with her stepdad. I'm hesitant to bring up the timeline thing because I don't want her staying with us at all. Even if it was guaranteed she'd move out after high school. I have my own place now that I like but it's too small for two people with us. Especially with working from home. Moving in was just a natural next step after three years. I wouldn't still be dating her if I didn't see marriage potential. But I wouldn't be getting married without living together. This has been our first real fight in two years. We normally have a good relationship, but I'm afraid this may become a deal breaker. I'd be fine extending my lease, but she's in a tough position. She was living in a studio and she can't afford a two bed. I'm totally open to extending my lease one year. Her getting a two bedroom with her sister and doing another year not cohabitating. That doesn't appear financially feasible for her. Though she was just living in a studio, she definitely can't afford a two bedroom. Someone says to Opie and says, so she's expecting you to provide financially for her sister. That's not fair and not what to want, especially when her sister could stay where she is. She isn't homeless. Lay your cards on the table and renew your lease. Good luck. Opie says she hasn't proposed that. I think she knows that would not go over well. I don't think she sees it as me supporting her in a shared apartment like it would be if I just straight gave her money for a place I don't live in, but it's the same thing. Now, I totally understand siblings wanting to support siblings and all that. And, and if we was talking about abuse in this case and her escaping that, I think we'd be talking about a different issue. But it sounds like in this story, that's not the case. And I totally understand where you're coming from. And we're not just talking about housing her. We're talking about all sorts of other bills as well. We're going to be talking about food, electric, gas, water, all sorts of other consumables in your house at the same time. And then how is it going to affect your relationship? I think the way I've read this story, you will be resentful of this and it's just going to damage your relationship. But Miss Deke says, I'm 36 and a single mum to a teen daughter. My boyfriend proposed to me and I'll be selling my house soon and relocating both of us to live with him. This arrangement obviously comes with the fact that my fiance will be acting as a co-parent to my daughter. 
This is a huge responsibility that he's already been doing faithfully for over a year. And that's why we know this move is right for us. You shouldn't take on responsibility that exceeds the level of relationship you're in. If you're considering marriage or lifetime partnership sometime soon, maybe I could understand. The dating phase might not support this huge step she's asking. I'm sure her sister is delightful, so is my daughter, but she still gives me heart palpitations daily by being a typical lazy moody teen, like we all were once upon a time. It's a labor of love and a test of internal fortitude to live with a teen. Nothing to be taken lightly at all. I hope you can tactfully, lovingly, and respectfully explain this to your girlfriend. Good luck. Alarming isopod said this is a bad idea. Having a sister there will add strain to your relationship. What's to say you two start to face the same issues as a stepdad? You want your first place together to just be the two of you, learning how to live with each other. I would stay where you are. If your girlfriend wants to get a place with her sister, then she can. Older but wiser says just say no. Tell her you'd love to live with her, but if she needs to be roommates with little sister, then you won't be a part of it. And that you two need to put off moving in together until little sister finds a home separate from her. This post also reminds me of a much more frequent type of post I see on Reddit. Ones where a friend or a relative on a temporary stay never leaves. Would your girlfriend actually kick her out if sister won't leave after the end of the school year? I don't think so either. Just another main girl says you're not married to this woman. In fact, you're not even living together yet. I agree that it's not fair for your girlfriend to unilaterally decide to let her sister to live with you and expect you to simply nod and go along with what the two of them want. If your girlfriend wants to take on the obligation of being a substitute parent for her sister until she graduates, that's her decision to make for herself. It's unfair of her to expect you to support something you consider to be an unwise choice for yourself and your relationship, both emotionally and financially. You're not abandoning her family because you're not willing to shell out extra money to pay for a place large enough for you all to not be in each other's face all day. Or because you prefer to wait to move in with until her little sis graduates from high school and hopefully moves out again. Because that's the other big question. What if her sister never actually moves out? I really think your best choice is to renew your own lease for another year and let your girlfriend do whatever she thinks is best for her and for her sister. If you stay strong and refuse to share a household, as long as she and her sister are a package deal, I wouldn't be surprised if your girlfriend changes her mind and convinces her sister to continue living at home for the next half year. So then OP kindly updates the post two days later and says, I, 28 male, got a lot of DMs asking for an update, so here goes. I made this post Tuesday and that night I met with my, now ex, girlfriend, 26 female, and laid out why I was not comfortable with living with her sister. She tried to change my mind, First in a debate style, then I told her it wasn't something I was going to change my mind about. It is a hard deal breaker. If she can't accept it, I will not be moving in with her. She then started getting more confrontational, which is when I told her I don't think our relationship can proceed. Immediately, she got regretful and told me not to be so drastic. I told her I needed some space and went home. Wednesday, I asked for more space again and then last night we met up and I officially broke up with her. I don't want to talk badly about her, but... I realized we just weren't as aligned as I thought we were, and the way she disregarded my opinion and comfort felt extremely disrespectful. She called me a bunch of times after I left last night, and I blocked her number this morning. I'm going to keep it blocked so I can get some peace for a while. Maybe in a few days I'll unblock and see if she can have a civil discussion for closure, if she wants that. But my mind is made up. Breakups suck, and I know it'll take some time to get over her, but I'm looking forward to the next stage of my life. In the comments below this one, OP says she made it clear that my comfort where I live didn't matter and tried to steamroll me into a unilateral decision that I would be financially responsible for. The ask originally was a lot, but okay for her to ask. The insistence and disregard for my feelings was a deal breaker. She's not a bad person, but she wasn't respectful of me. I've thought about it a lot and discussed it with people close to me. It sucks, but it's the right move. Fortunately, I'm still young and there's no kids involved. I have a lot going for me, a good job and a great network of friends. I'm confident when I'm ready to get back out there, I'll do just fine. A commenter said to OP, anytime you have regrets, just remember that if you'd agreed to live with a sister, you would have never been able to walk around in your underwear, in your own home. OP says, I know it sounds dumb, but this is one of many reasons I didn't want to live with her. Money was a huge part, but I also wanted to be comfortable in my own home. Also, us moving in together was a huge step. To add a dramatic teenager would have made things much worse. I was okay paying about two-thirds of the expenses when it was just us two, 
had to pay that much or significantly more if we got a three bed, which we likely would have need to, to not be comfortable in my own home just wasn't going to happen. I told her we can put living together off a year and she can get a place with her sister if she really wants to get her out of her house. That was not good enough for her and she then just wouldn't relent and called me selfish. That's when I knew I was done with the relationship. She tried to take things back but it became clear how she felt. I'm honestly looking forward to being single again. Not to sound arrogant but I'm a good looking guy and have a great job. I look forward to playing the field until meeting someone else with better respect for boundaries. Someone else says, Glad you got a clear picture of what married life would be like early on. And Opie says, this is what my best friend was telling me. He told me, try and talk it out and tell her how you feel. If she won't respect that, think about what you think being with her for the rest of your life will be like. When he told me that, I was hoping she'd respect my boundaries when I laid them out very carefully and detailed, but she didn't and his advice was in the back of my head. It sucks, but I know I made the right decision. And when reading these stories, I always find like, sometimes little sentences that really ground me in one story and in this particular story it said she's not a bad person but she wasn't respectful of me and op is right what's a relationship without that mutual respect but now i'm going to turn this one to you guys what do you guys make of this let me know your thoughts down in the comments below and let's move on to another story and before we do get into our next story, I just want to give you a warning. There is mentions of miscarriage throughout the story. So if you do want to skip the story, please feel free to do so. Timestamps are down in the description and along the timeline below. Thank you. And our next story does come with an update as well from a throwaway account asking, am I the a-hole for going to my brother's bachelor party? I, male 28, have a girlfriend, female 22, Nylea, and we have been dating for close to a year at this point. We had a great relationship leading up to this point and now I'm just in shock of the position we are now in. Nylea and I recently found out she was pregnant. It was shocking to say the least because we weren't actively trying. Because me and her were under the impression that she will never be able to naturally conceive children. She told me when she was younger she went through some horrible stuff and in a result of that, the doctor told her she will probably never be able to have a kid of her own without medical intervention. So this is somewhat a miracle baby. And we were both fully prepared to have this baby until she unfortunately miscarried. It was really horrible to say the least. She fell into a depression and I was sad too. Two weeks later, I had a trip planned for my brother's bachelor party. This was planned way before we even found out she was pregnant. She told me how she didn't want me to go and that she still needs me, but I wasn't sure what she wanted me to do if I stayed. I told her I will be back in three days and she seemed fine with that answer because she gave me the go ahead. The day I was leaving, she asked me, are you seriously actually going to go? I told her I had to since the ticket and hotel is non-refundable, so I did end up going. The whole trip, I barely heard from her. I tried calling her and she just ignored me. I came home from the trip to our apartment and all of her stuff was gone, and she took my dog and dropped it off over at my parents' house. I went to my mum's house and picked up my dog, and she told me my girlfriend dropped the dog off because she couldn't watch it and she needed space from me. I told my mum what happened and she told me I was an idiot and an asshole for what I did. I don't believe what I did was wrong by going on this trip. She told me I could go. I tried calling her to sort this out because I love her and I've just been ignored so far. So, am I the a-hole? Edit. Yes, sorry for the typo. I'm male. Typo, I'm at work and she told me point blank that I could go. Second edit. I get it, my spelling sucks. I wrote this at work. Second, I'm not blaming my girlfriend for me going to Vegas. I'm just simply saying she gave me an okay, but I thought at the time she truly didn't care. Lastly, saying remarks regarding that her having a miscarriage was the best thing that could happen is extremely hurtful. You can say I'm an asshole without saying that. Freedom Soul Spirit says and quotes, I told her I'll be back in three days and she seemed fine with an answer because she gave me the go ahead. Then goes on to say, did she say something like, I'm fine if you go, or something like, fine, go then. And Opie's response to that was, she said, I don't care, just go. So I took it as face value. I'm not a mind reader. Then Freedom Soul Spirit continues, that's definitely in something like, fine, go then category, which means she was tired of explaining why she needed you to stay, so she gave up. You didn't have to be a mind reader to know she didn't want you to go. She told you, you ignored her and told her you were going. When you were leaving, she told you again. You ignored her and went anyway. It's not surprising she left you. You're the a-hole. 
Holy Gonzo replies that and says, you left to go on a fun trip shortly after your girlfriend has gone through a physically and emotionally traumatic experience. Where in that sentence, do you feel like you did the right thing? You're the a-hole. Naked Street says, you're the a-hole. Seriously, one of the biggest a-holes in existence. This comment said it all and quotes, if she told me straight up, this is a make it or break it decision for our relationship, then I would have definitely not went. She didn't present it as it was something important for me to stay. Then goes on to say, she told you that it was important to her that you stay, but she didn't tell you that it was important to you to stay. You thought it was okay to leave because she was the only person to deal with the fallout, but now there are consequences to you. It's suddenly important. You were supposed to stay because you give a shit about your partner, not because you're afraid of being single. Careless League says, yes, you're the a-hole. Who the hell ditches their partner right after they had a miscarriage, especially when it was from a pregnancy they thought they would never be able to have. Good for her for calling you out and setting up boundaries for when you get back. You just betrayed her trust in a way you really can't recover from. And one more comment from Rohini Rambles who says, you're the a-hole. You're fighting in the comments so hard. For what? Maybe you're right. How dare she want you there? How dare she actually tell you that and not put more effort into explaining to a dense boyfriend why his presence might be needed? She told you a handful of times. That's not enough to make your ego big. What was she thinking? You're right. This is all her fault. Why didn't you officially break up with her and let her heal from a miscarriage by herself? I'm sure you can find another party or two to distract yourself from such an unreasonable woman. Slash sarcasm. OP then updates the post and says, update. I appreciate the feedback, even though very harsh, and I know I'm definitely in the wrong. I want to apologize to my girlfriend. I realize I fucked up badly. She agreed to meet up with me later and talk. Final update. For anyone that still cares, thanks for all the judgments and advice, and me and Nayla have a deep discussion. She cried to me and apologized, and we're on good terms now, and we are still grieving. And I was just left after that one thinking, what is she apologizing for in this? But now I'm going to turn this one to you guys. What do you guys make of this situation? And let's go on to another story. And this next story comes from adhesiveness any 4098 and says, am I the a-hole for telling my husband my kids will not be supporting my stepson at sports games anymore? My husband and I have been married for six years and together for eight. He has a 15-year-old son, Lucas. Lucas's mum died when he was five years old. I came into our marriage with Bryn, who is 11 now, and Miley, who is nine. Together, my husband and I have Alec, who is five. So Bryn and Miley are Lucas's stepsisters and Alec is his half-brother. Lucas has this trinket box with a couple of small trinkets inside of it that his mum left for him when she died. He keeps it in his room mostly, but he likes to sometimes walk around with it in his hand. I've always told my kids it is not theirs. They're not to touch it unless Lucas says they can, and they cannot pester him about it. When we first got married, Miley was really fascinated with it and did want to touch it, but I nipped it in the bud since it was so special. Regarding the dynamic, Lucas is very closed off from me and the kids. I've always done my best to bond with him, but he's so withdrawn around me and therapy, which we did when we first got married. Did not get us onto a path of being close, though I never expected to be his mum, and I don't want that considered. About a month ago, we were having dinner, and my husband cracked the joke that Lucas seemed to care more about the trinket box than us after Lucas refused to let Alec get closer to look at it. Lucas said very seriously that the box meant more than me and the kids and he would gladly trade us to save the box if anything happened to it. My husband was shocked Lucas spoke so seriously and the girls got upset about it. Alec wasn't paying attention when it was said. My husband took Lucas aside to speak to him and I spoke to the girls. They told me Lucas had said that before, that he would trade our lives to save his box, that we better hope he's never asked to save one of us or the box because the box would win. He said this to them on a few occasions over a period of time. They never told me because they didn't know how to bring it up. He told Alec the same as well. My husband said Lucas would need some therapy because he saw nothing wrong with saying that honestly. I told him he was saying it and more to the kids when we didn't overhear. My husband said therapy would get to the bottom of things. A few days later, Lucas is telling Bryn that he'd save his friends over the box but not her. I told my husband about it and he said it would be mentioned to the therapist. He had a consultation with one the next day. Lucas argued that he didn't need therapy and just because he doesn't care about us or our lives doesn't mean there is something wrong with him. I told my husband that given Lucas's attitude towards the kids, they will no longer show up to cheer him on at any sports games or the like. My husband argued we are still a family. 
I told him my kids do not need to cheer on a boy who has told them to their faces multiple times that their lives are meaningless to him. My husband thinks I'm overreacting and would be wrong to do this. Am I the a-hole? Primary criticism says, what the fuck does this topic of saving someone over the box keep popping up like that? Everyone sucks here except the kids. Honestly, it sounds like this toxic environment was brought by the adults. Your husband's comment during dinner should have never happened. Why would you ask something like that to a teenager who is clearly missing his mother? Therapy is not going to change the fact that the 15-year-old misses his mother, does not see you and your kids as his family, and that you actually don't know what he would do if a crazy scenario actually happened. I can tell you that if there was a fire, I'd risk my life to save a stranger. Truth is, I've never been in this situation and I don't know how I would react. I'm 30 fucking 2. Your SS is fucking 15. Just leave him the fuck alone and let your kids choose to go or not to his games. Opie says, apparently, he wanted my kids to know their place and to not get the idea that they mean anything to him. His words. They say it always came out of nowhere. Though the time at dinner, my husband definitely brought it on by making that awful joke. Boobity goobity says, not the a-hole. I feel like I'm going to get a lot of flack for this. Mortality is hard on kids. It really, really sucks that your stepson is struggling so much with his mother's passing slash family blending. But that doesn't give him the right to continually bully and deride other children. If this was happening in a school setting where a kid was telling other kids their lives are meaningless to them, blah, 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 that would be very not okay. Teaching your kids boundaries is important. Forcing them to go to his events after he speaks repeatedly like that, which clearly upsets them, is teaching them that their feelings don't matter. There are consequences to all actions and despite his grief, it's not an excuse to mistreat others. It also might help for them not to go, giving him a little more space to adjust if it's just his dad plus stepmom. Right now, he's struggling to adjust to the new family dynamic and the full frontal of that at every event might be making him more bitter. Maybe with therapy and time, he requests they come. Maybe not. Maybe he apologize and try harder to get to know them. But a little breathing room actually seems to be what he needs even if he's lashing out and getting it the wrong way. Orion says, you know what? Everyone here has given you so much grief. Not the a-hole. You are still going to his games to be supportive. You're just removing the other three children from the hurtful comments. I think that's a good idea. He definitely needs therapy. And even then, he may just be civil. I do think you're thinking of the best for all four kids. Teenagers say stupid, hurtful stuff all the time. And compounded with grief, it can't be a good mix of what's happening inside his head. Be patient. May I suggest playdates or grandparents for the other three while you and husband go to his games. Now, I'm going to turn this one to you guys. What do you guys make of this situation? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. And just a huge thank you from the bottom of my heart for being involved in today's stories. Your love, your support, your time always means the absolute world to me. So thank you so, so much for being involved. And hopefully, I will see you in the next one. Take care and much love.